Hey guys, uh, we're out here in central Alberta. Weather change, hey? Oh, weather change day, yeah. We're talking, what, 10 degrees today is a high. As a high. Yeah, the last two days we were up kind of in the 20s, you know. And, and sunny and all. And sunny and all, and now. But the problem was that uh, a lot of the, well, we're, we're just May 1st today, and just at the tail end of the spring thaw and all that kind of stuff. So um, the upper slopes yesterday went and got real warm, and the last of the snow on the ice, well, that, well, it's, it, it, we yeah. put a lot of streams yeah. off color. So here we are, we come to an old favorite, probably yeah. my favorite creek in the province of Alberta, the X. And we're obviously here in really crap conditions, but we came here, a cloudy day, because we got spruce backdrop, gin clear, uh, four foot Super wide spring creek. Super low and clear, yeah. yeah. And it's exciting to us because we can sight fish. Yeah. We're here to just see what we see and, and hopefully engage maybe one or two fish. I mean, we don't have high hopes, uh, uh, yeah. but Hopefully yeah. one each is kind of the thing. We're here to sight fish, maybe find a rising fish. But more than anything, this is a creek that uh, we did a video on about, I don't know, 12 or 14 years ago called Q the X. Yeah. And the premise behind that was, is a tiny creek like this, there's only so many fish and we knew them by heart for, I don't know, forever. And at the end of it, it was like, well, you know, I had to put a, a video together about 12, 14 years ago at the end of a long run of getting to know every single fish, questioning, do we need to get to know every single fish on a creek like this? Yeah. It's really cool to do that, but when you know that you're catching the same fish over and over and over, five, six, eight years in a row, yeah. there's a point at which you know what your impact is gonna be. And we're far enough removed from that now that, hey, we get to come back and have some fun and trying to find a couple. see what's here. That's yeah. right. See what's here. And there's been some higher waters that have, you know, come and gone through this. But, yeah. hey, it's still here, and we know it's got a few great bands, and, yeah, we'll we're, just go We're inside. hunting one, and yep. it's kind of New Zealand on a micro scale. Yeah. And since it can't be in New Zealand this year, well, hopefully maybe next January, hey? But, ah. So, come on. Let's go and walk the X together and see what we can find. See what we see. Okay. Crazy for the amount of times that we've chased big fish up and down this pond, eh? Rising big caddis, you know? One, two, three, mm. oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, isn't it best out of three? Nope, oh. not when I make up the rules. This is Calvin ball, baby. <laughs> make them up as you go along. Okay, so this, is always, this has always been kind of fun because there's a real nice trough of deep stuff across the way. I know there's a fish in here, but it's small. Um, I saw a little flash there just as we were rigging up about a five inch brownie. The stuff across is always good. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to get there. I kind of want to look right over. Actually, was that a rise? No, that was just a reflection of the waves there. We'll come around these sticks. This is the uh, bushiest bit is right at the start here. So right now I'm looking for fish right across in the heart, in the bucket, against that stuff. I'm not going to be able to see down there. I'm okay with that because we're actually trying to make our way upstream a little bit get into uh get into the farmland stuff and you know you come ever so slowly around this stump clump looking for a fish oh, oh man i forgot what this is like it's been about three years since i've been here since we uh moved to southern alberta oh 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 no there he is i see him he's just off of the point he's actually like this Okay. off the top point up there he's right off okay you see he's the rocks facing. in the middle oh yeah he's right angled like that yeah it's about a 16 inch fish see the stick oh, coming yeah, off that clump he's angled into he's, he's angled that white the white stick that's submerged yeah that's he, what i'm talking about just two feet to the right of it yep exactly okay. yeah he 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 ate a nymph or something and yeah that was my clue cool Right on the there, he's just going oh, to the right. He he's okay, really super active, this I fish. Saw that. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. Not huge, but man, oh man, gorgeous. Yeah. Trouble's going to be getting into place. 
I gotta make sure there's nothing on the other side of this stuff too, hey? I saw a wake right here that I just wanna make sure isn't a fish. So I'm just gonna get in and go when I go, love. I, I don't see him right now, that's the problem. I'm just gonna move into position while the wind is up. That was rough because that I didn't see the top fish. There's actually a couple fish in here and I was going at the one that was active and that induced a take or a look from the top fish. And as soon as I, <laughs> as soon as I cast in there, that, that uh, top fish turned and came right downstream at my fly and it took off, took the second fish with it. It was pretty cool. This, uh, the original small 18 incher came back up I and mean, she's back here now but she swam right up to the head of this stump looked and went over and I just saw the dark shape move of that big fish and she just scootled right out of there so I yeah okay I'm gonna get going here so everything changed when I saw a big two-foot male scooching out from underneath that stump so no here we go. Okay, now we're going for it. Going right into where we think that big guy is. Right along the front of that. And just gonna... Got a fish. It's not the big fish, let me tell you. No, nope. Jeepers, where'd he go? Ah, I caught the wrong fish. No, he's right underneath that stump. So I'm just going to try to slide in here and just slide, slide, try to protect my cover because this guy just, this girl just came flying out. Nice fish and all, don't get me wrong. Really cool visual. But I'm going to stay low and try to do this. Okay, now that was cool, really cool. And you hate to be the guy that says, yeah, but I wanted, <laughs> you know. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, here we go. I think that was the one that we heard rise on the top side. Not where I wanted it, still not close enough. He'll see it if he sees it. I'm three feet out from where I want to be. When that stuff happens, there we go. That's actually the cast I wanted and needed, but there we go. Right in there. Ah. Ah, there he is. Oh, yeah, he came flying out after it. Yes. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's the guy that was patrolling everybody else. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh yeah. Woohoo. No, you can't give up. Even on that. I knew he was in there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I, I think this pocket's over. I'm safe to kind of come in here right now. <laughs> it's actually, I don't think it's a male either. It's, I think it's just a fat female. Tennis racket, Dave, tennis racket. And the alligator, yes! That's as exciting as I can get. <laughs> You gotta play a hunch. Here we are. Yes. How about that, eh? Gorgeous fishy. She's got a leech in her side too, eh? Look at that fish. Yeah. Okay. Definitely 22. Wicked. Isn't that exciting? She just charged at it. Or he, I guess. It's a small-headed male. Yeah, small-headed male, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh man, nothing makes you happier, hey? It, it, it was awesome because those there was two fish up here, and I thought for sure the one was going to be a gimme because it was just nice and feeding. And you know they kept kind of feeding this way and that, and then they cut button hook to the stump, and then they came down here, and they did that a couple times. And I thought, well, maybe that's my cast. And that one cast induced two fish to look, but no take. 
and then they went under and came back and I was like wait a second and as I was tying on a dropper nymph this big dark fish well big 22 or whatever the heck that was it was definitely 22 comes from down here along the log and circled and came out went underneath the stump and I was like ah he's not coming out and that's when the little streamer went on it was like okay if you're not going to come up I'm going to go at you and I pitched it up to the top of that well over there you know the the top side um, pillow well and you go yeah he's, he's gonna be there well I pitched it in there boof what was that first one 15 or so well, inches and right I was like out. oh no and you're like you're that guy going I caught the wrong fish you don't want to be that guy saying oh boo hoo woe is me I caught the wrong fish but I was next cast to put the streamer back in <laughs> last second just coming that it's, it's always coming off that depth change hey and just as my streamer was coming up over this marl depth change, I just saw this thing come flying out at me. I was like, oh yeah. I was like, yeah, I can see it in the camera. Like, oh. Good old Kool-Aid man. Oh yeah. And I was like, ah, oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so we got some real serious shade issues here. Yeah. Shadow. And you gotta rely on movement or smudges or green glow. A rise would be brilliant, but that would be amazing. This, this pool used to be so also good. Filled in a fair bit. Yeah. It's, one through. it's all about the well yeah. underneath that. Yeah. And I guarantee there's probably a fish there based on what we just saw. Yeah, I bet there is. And looking for tails, yeah. looking for movement. And now I got a really good line on sighting into that. Yes. Um, not seeing any fishy shapes or movement. A new bit of a beaver pond, beaver dam. So I'm going to continue going wide because sometimes in that trough of the beaver dam that really channelizes the current. And if you can get a channel in there, that's going to be depth. And if there's depth, sometimes there might be a fish. But he also might not see it because look at how grown in that is, yeah, eh? Like really mat of sticks. And right now you go, to, you guys are a long ways away from the water. Well, we are. Well, wow, you can see when that sun's up. Oh, you can. And if we can see everything, so can fish. Yeah, exactly. Hey. Right now, so yeah. That's not to our and it is to see, but. Somebody would say, yeah, but Dave, you're wearing a, a blue jacket. Well, yeah, that gonna... fish charged within six feet of me, so I think that's okay. Just remember, I'm wearing like a mustard, you know, yeah. colored. Yeah. <laughs> you okay if I lead or? Yeah, okay. What I like to do on this one is kind of, again, because if you're low over there, you have the backdrop, but you have no angle to look in. So you're, yeah. you're not gonna see. Yeah. Um, there's no bugs bringing fish up to the surface, so that's a non-starter from over there. Yeah. So what I like to do is come over here and sneak around, stay wide again. That way you can use those far trees back over there. And I'm just going foot by foot by foot on that line with that tree in the back using that dark, backdrop to look for anything that's fish shaped right out in here and that's useless on a GoPro of course but that's the best I got so we're not seeing anything in here as yet and our best bet right now is to actually go in and uh, no nothing on top Dave sight tried to sight as much as he could from the bank and just nothing so I'm going in there with just our little small size eight woolly bugger streamer and i'm going to try to get a few casts um right into the deeper stuff right along underneath this overhanging spruce and get her up in there I can see everything in front of me here, a couple rod lengths. If anything was slowly swimming back, I could just flip it and, and try to lead, lead a fish there. But I'm gonna try to get it so my back cast can go right behind me and I can land my flies just upstream of this spruce because that's where the depth is in this water. The whole time I'm just scanning, scanning, scanning. It's got a lead weight in front of it, so it's pretty hard to land that. Here it comes. Yeah? Keep going. Just strip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eat it, eat it. Eat it, eat it. 
Oh, he's right there. Yes. Oh, I had him. Come on. Eat it again. Damn it. I had him. He had just... Here we go. No, I'm going to let him settle. Oh, that was amazing. That was a good fish. Oh, I had it briefly, too. He just chomped. And I set, and then he just wasn't there. Oh, I don't know what you guys can see through here. I'm hoping you could see that because that was just this big shape. Dung, 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 like a little shark in a, in a small pond just coming for it. Is he coming down? Okay, well, I'm going to try to sneak in and see if I can see anything. Obviously, there's a well, there's an undercut. Oof, that is cold. Seven above on the old Celsius scale of things. And it's really hard to see in there because of that wind and that foam and that chop. And I'm not seeing anything in there. And because it's cold, there's nothing happening food-wise. And because nothing's happening bug-wise, the fish ain't moving. It's amazing what this used to look like, hey, with uh, beaver pond. Yeah, it was right over the top of this. But, yeah, like this was all water. The old beaver pond knocked it back. The run came all the way up here. And he'd walk through here and hope to see a big brown or two just kind of cruising along all the marley bottom out here and yeah it was uh it was cool this is back to what it used to look like way back when hey when we first started coming in here and these big old browns would cruise up and down this now wow <laughs> yeah Got to use the backdrop. If we're on the other side looking out, it would be miserable to try to see cruising fish in this. But because we're here, you know, look on that trough, there's nothing shallow. Not too often do browns like to come cruising shallow unless it's right dark. And so far today, it's nice and dark and cloudy, but it's not dark dark. So right underneath there, I know we've caught them underneath that exact stick. I remember that one time that really nice fish came cruising down along that mm. corner and you, all I had to do was get your fly on the water. Mm. Yeah. It's got no depth though, hey? No depth, yeah. It's funny because we've both missed a good fish here through the years, but never caught a good fish here. Can you deliver the fly? Can you get any cast? Can you get into any position to have a go at them? Can you find them without spooking them? And this is so much glare, it's crazy. It's always been glare in that spot, coming into these big opening, hey? Um, basically, yeah, I can just see his lower fins and his shape. And the problem is that he's sitting against this side of the drop-off break, the shelf. So in order to get a cast to where he's actually going to feed deeper, I'd have to cross him. I don't know if he's going to come all the way left uh, to those right just to feed. But he's sitting right up in there. I can see him playing his day. Another rise up there, hey? Oh, if only I could see the dang thing, you know? I'm just going to have a look and see if I can see any bit better from this side. Trouble, of course, is I won't have a back cast at all from this side. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to come back and just do that. Um, yeah. All I got is a try. It looks like there's a smudge way up either above the stump or way up by that rock in the middle of the creek up there. I don't really want to expose myself too much. He's up above me right up there. He's upstream of me. Oh, what to do here? Oh, that's tough. My back cast is all okay. Right? Okay. 
I think I'm going to have to put it to his right here. He's right up here. Right up there. I'm just going to wait for that wee wind. Oh, man. Yeah. Yep. Of course the wind's going to come howling around that corner now. Are you kidding me? Oh, I don't want that ATV noise to push him off his lie right now. Sometimes just a bit of disturbance like that. And next thing you know, and then you don't want to rush. And then you second guess everything. Okay. He just did a little bit of a feed there. And I'm just waiting for this gust here. This, this turnover killing little puff. <laughs> you know? You can just see it on the trees up there. Ah. Uh, yeah, it's just coming around. That wind is, there he is. He just nymphed. You see that? Wow, that was gutting. Oh my. <laughs> you just want to scream when that happens. Fishes down there. He just actually yawned. It looked like so. Let's let's feed him here. Yeah, so that was gutting. That was absolutely gutting. Um, the, the landowner went across the stream upstream and sent a plumb of uh, uh, dust in through the run on his ATV and the fish turned around and came downstream and all the way down and it sat in there and <laughs> put a, a caddis with a long dropper on and the thing just came over and you could just see it eat the nymph and it was really cool and then it jumped and it jumped and it popped off it was like oh no and <laughs> i was gutted okay he's right along shore see that stick sticking out yeah mills He's about a rod length above that in shallow. Okay. Mel, see that? Mills? Yeah. It's right there to the right of that. Yeah. Just coming out into the center. Yeah, I saw that. Just rose. He's coming out to your bank. He's out on the flat here, just a second. Hang tight. He's out in the middle. He's out right in the middle. About a rod length and a half upstream of that, coming to my side. Yeah, come on, let's go. A little higher. Here he comes. Yes! Oh, did you see those? Yes! Oh, did you see those lifts? Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, it, it's a, it's the most stunning fish I've seen in a long time. That is, look at its colors. Okay, this is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Easy peasy, what love. What is up with those colors? I saw that thing coming. And I was oh, like, uh oh, man. this is amazing, amazing color wise. That was epic. 
Okay, come on. I don't want to lose this fish. I have to go up with it. I've got 4X on, which I know is strong, but it makes, makes me nervous. Makes me real nervous. Okay, come on, Mills. Come on, you can do this. You can do this. Come on, come on. You got to get that head up. You got to get that head up. Okay, head up, head up, head up. Head up, head up, head up. Scoop it in the net. Yes! Oh, ho, ho, ho. When, when you cast that thing, oh. I, I was trying to be on focus, but there's no way. It's such a gorgeous fish. And when your fly landed, it was actually about five feet downstream, but it turned right around and came straight down at you. Yeah, it's like, oh my gosh. And I waited on that hook. Set. Oh, yeah. I saw you that did an amazing job. It's more job. like the like inside of a golden oh, trout, if I'm yeah. honest. Yeah. I am beside myself. Look at this. I mean, it's got like a peachy red in its animal fin. What a fish. I am beside myself stoked for this. Oh, yes! Yes! Oh. Well, if you could tell by any of that <laughs> crazy intense emotion, man, I was really into that fish. Um, it wouldn't have happened without Dave though. So I had complete glare on my side. Dave was on the other side. He saw the fish, the fish was in real shallow. Like we're talking a couple feet offshore and maybe in, I don't know, a foot of water. And he was able to point out where it was and he said, did you see that? As I was getting into position and I did, I thought it was a rise. Oh no, it was the dorsal fin as the fish was moving out. And so then he could see he was slowly moving out more to the center of the river. And of course, Dave just said, hey, get a cast going. So I got my cast going. I just had on like a little a medium sedge. And oh, those set of lifts. I don't know what the GoPro captured and if you can see that, but the set of lifts comes up and the inside of that mouth, that, that fish had a peach tone to it that I've never seen on a brown trout. And it just comes up and you know, you lose a couple seconds of time um, where you don't even remember actually waiting for that mouth to close and that fish to turn, but I obviously did because I had hooked it well. And then, and then the fight. And it, you know, it just, it wasn't much of a fight, but of course I was nervous. I wanted to land that fish. I just wanted that fish. So yeah, what a, what a moment in time. Um, that's where two people sight fishing is, it can be so critical, especially on these days where it's cloudy and you've got glare at certain angles that, that another person makes a massive difference. So I am hugely grateful for Dave that might be a fish of the season for me. It's definitely a fish of the spring, no doubt about it.